What's up everybody? Jay Ingersoll here, MCI EDP Studios. Thank you so much for checking out today's video. Today, I'm gonna give you guys some tips to get better home recordings. So this video is for, you know, rappers, singers, songwriters, anybody that's just kind of trying to record themselves at home singing or doing anything into one mic. Before we begin this video, I just wanna say thank you so much for checking out the other videos. Got some really great feedback on those and it looks like you guys actually took something away from that and that's what I'm trying to do with these videos. These videos are never gospel. I'm not telling anybody what they need to do or what they should do. Just hoping that you can get one or two gems out of these that might make you go further, faster in whatever goal you're trying to achieve. Some tips for better home recording. The first thing that we're going to talk about is going to be your room is key. Your mic is going to sound different in any room that you set it in because of the different way the room has, is shaped, the different reflections and deflections off of different surfaces in there. If you have your mic set up in a room all of the time and you kind of have that dedicated space for that, then some good options would be to treat your room. And there's a lot of different ways you can do that with reflectors, deflectors, traps, and absorbers. But a lot of times you just need a couple good base traps for your room and maybe a little deflection foam so the room, the noise or the wave files aren't bouncing all around, right? You, there's a lot of different studio foam. The science gets deep on that. It's very expensive for good stuff. You can get some cheap stuff that can help out a little bit. But some other options, especially if you're on a budget, you can get one of these deflector shields like I have right here, this SE Electronics. There's different brands that make them, but the same concept prevails on all of them. Basically, it just goes around the back of your mic to help you cut out deflections. This thing definitely comes in handy. Another great option is like a Chaotica Eyeball or this cheaper version that I have that costs like 25% of what an eyeball does. But even though I have treatment in my room, I still like it because I have some deflections I don't like. And I do really like this thing, especially for the price. Those are some options. Just remember, your room is going to make or break the sound of your microphone or your recording. Next step is basically just mic placement. You can put the mic wherever you want to put it, right? If you want to sit down and sing or play whatever you're doing or stand up and do it, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure that you're getting a good clean signal going directly into the mic. I see a lot of the times, like if you're reading on a piece of paper, reading your lyrics or reading off a phone, your head might tilt in a certain way and it might go against the mic. So then you're going to be trying to deal with mixing a signal that sometimes goes in the mic and sometimes not. So just try to stay consistent. You know, put the mic right right where you're going to be able to get a good clean signal in and it's not too far above or you're pointing a certain way and whatever makes you comfortable, right? Tip number three, you really want to work on your gain staging. That is a more complicated term for just saying, making sure that your levels are correct so you're not getting some booty signal, right? So distortion or some crackling or background or room noise, that can always be a problem. So if you have your signal too high, your wave's going to look like crap. It's going to be all crunched and be way too loud. And if it is too low, you're not going to get a good signal coming back and be able to mix it correctly even if you try to raise it later, it's going to bring out a lot of the imperfections that are in there. All right, so the gain staging, your microphone, mine goes into two stages before it goes into my recording software or my DAW. I use Pro Tools, so I'm going to show you a little what that looks like. You'll see my mic going into my Avalon, which is my preamp first, and I just want to make sure that this stage isn't too loud so it distorts. I never want the needle pumping really hard to the right. I kind of want to keep it in the middle and get a good level going in. And then mine goes into my mixer, which is also my sound card. And then you'll see that I just use the one knob for gain, which would be the same on like your sound card or your interface going into your computer. A lot of times you might just have the one, but make sure that's set at a good level. And you can check right here inside the DAW or your recording software to make sure that the level doesn't go too high. You never want it to redline. Even yellow is kind of bad because if you get too high on one word or, or and emphasize something a little bit more, that thing is going to distort or pop or go beyond the level that it should. A lot of the times the levels in your DAW 
those usually are for like monitoring or mixing back. A lot of times those don't affect the input in. So just know where your input's going in and get a nice clean signal. A lot of people ask a question like, should I get a studio monitor? Should I get headphones? Should I do both? Well, obviously these all depend on your budget because studio monitors can go from $100, I believe now even cheaper, all the way to the thousands and thousands of dollars. Same thing with headphones, but I will say this about both. One, studio monitors are going to be a lot better and give you a good clean reference point if you're mixing your own music or wanting to listen to it back at a good rate, what it's actually going to sound like. A nice studio monitor does help. And then if you don't have the option or budget for studio monitors and you just want to do headphones, you know, you may have roommates or you're doing recording at home in an apartment, something like that, and you just want to use headphones, you know, I would suggest investing in a good pair of headphones some studio referencing monitor headphones if you can i have some yamahas i really like also i have some akgs that i really really am partial to that sound really good and obviously you're going to need some headphones anyway when you're tracking and things like that so that is a good investment but same with those those go way high all the way to way low another tip for you guys for better home recordings have templates set up and what I mean by that is like when you go to record a session, make sure you already have all of your tracks set up. Like I have a template here you'll see, and I always refine it over time. But I have all of my effects on a channel that I want to use. I have a bunch of channels already ready to go. So all I have to do is hit record. It's already set up to my inputs. So if I get an idea or I'm doing a session, I don't have to add another track. So just be organized and have your templates set up. It's something that I have avoided for a while. But now even when I go to make beats in FL, I have a template set up with a drum kit already loaded up. So if I just make a melody or a sample, throw a loop in there, I can easily just make a beat real fast. I can go back and change the sounds later, but it has a lot of things already leveled inside of there. So I can get a good idea out real fast without having the painstaking process of setting up more tracks or adding instruments and things like that. And also just stay organized. Label all of your folders, that is, to the most descriptive way possible. So when you're digging back later and you're looking for certain files, they're easy to find. And you'll find good techniques on that as you go. But make sure you use templates and are organized. Another tip for better home recordings, use what you have. You don't have to go spend a bunch of money on different plugins and things that you think are going to make the recording better. Sometimes they will and sometimes they won't. So... Use what you have. Learn how to use basic EQs, basic compression, maybe a little bit of limiting on the output, stuff like that. Once you kind of master that, if you see a new EQ or a new compressor that you want to try, then go ahead and do that. Using what the stock plugins and the things that you already have, you can get a good sounding recording or mix back with those. You don't need all the fancy tools. You know, you may need an auto tune, so pick that up. I have all of these plugins. I have a ton of them because I've done it myself. I have all these plugins and I only use like a handful of them. You know, it's cool to once in a while pull this one out or that one out, but just don't buy a bunch of stuff you don't need. You know, keep it basic and learn the basics first. I'm always a big fan of that. The very last tip I can give you guys about recording is just practice. Do it a lot. Do it all the time. Try different things. You know, have fun with it. Experiment with it. You know, you have to put in the hours to get better, just like anything. I'll say it on a million more videos, and I've probably said it on a million before, but it just takes the time. Put in the hours, you know, 10,000 hours, do the recording, get really good at recording. And if you don't want to learn the mixing, like I've said before, so you can just focus on that, just learn how to, you know, stem it down and send it out to have somebody else mix it. That's always a great option as well. So, all right. Well, I hope those tips helped you guys out for better home recordings. I'd really appreciate it. If you got anything on this video, you can comment below if it helped you. That helps me and it lets YouTube know to show people my videos. Please subscribe to the channel if you like videos like this and it helped you out in any way. And like the video. It also gives me some good feedback to know that I keep doing videos like this. With that being said, I want to say I appreciate you guys and peace. Much love.